On Crime 2 News at noon, we are going to be talking about plenty of warmer weather that is on the way, along with rain and snow, both in the forecast. The man who bombed Spokane City Hall was scheduled to be executed today. However, a ruling from the higher court changed the fate of Daniel Lewis Lee. And Spokane Public School boundary lines get setting to change in the next few years. years. We'll tell you when those changes will start and how they can impact our kids. Crim 2 News at Noon begins now. Hi everyone and welcome to Crim 2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. Jen York has the week off. Happening right now on Capitol Hill, the impeachment investigation does continue and we're taking a live look. The House Judiciary Committee is going through a 300 page congressional report about the president's dealings with the Ukraine and a 55 page report on the legal basis for impeachment. Now, last week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi asked congressional chairman to begin drafting articles of impeachment. Democrats say the president withheld a White House meeting and military aid as part of a campaign to pressure Ukraine to investigate 2020 Democratic political rival Joe Biden and his son. They are working to hold a full House vote on impeachment before Christmas. And you can continue to watch the hearing on Krem.com and always on the Krem2 mobile app. Again, a live look this afternoon. Hi everyone, and again, welcome to Crimson News at noon. The impeachment investigation continues as you just heard, and we'll continue to follow up with that in just a moment. And we'll take a look at some other news happening at noon. A watchdog report on the Russia probe has found no evidence of political bias. This is according to a summary obtained by the Associated Press. The report found 17 significant errors or omissions in surveillance applications by a Trump campaign aide. However, it did not find internal misconduct. The report is not expected to question results of the Mueller investigation. So again, all of this happening today on Capitol Hill, and we'll continue to track that. Uh, let's take a look here locally. We did begin our day with some foggy and icy conditions and winter weather not going away anytime soon. It is winter. Evan Narani is standing by. Hi, Evan. Hi, Laura. Yeah, we are kicking off yet another day of some pretty chilly temperatures in the morning and afternoon. Right now we're only at 29 degrees. It's chilly out there. Take a live look outside. Uh, you can't really see, but uh, it is cold. We've got 29 degrees in Spokane. Much of the Northwest is under sub freezing temperatures. We have seen a lot of that fog begin to clear out, but you can see the 24 hour temperature change brings temperatures 13 degrees colder than where they were just 24 hours ago. Seven degrees colder in Coeur d'Alene and 14 degrees colder in Moses Lake right now. Let's take a look at what we've got as far as fog. Now that uh, dense fog advisory expired at noon, but headed into the noon hour, we are still seeing some issues related to visibility in Deer Park, Moses Lake, Lewiston, Walla Walla, all spots on the map that are encountering some difficulty to start off the day. Uh, uh, as the next several hours come around, we're expecting maybe a very small chance for that sun to come out. It doesn't look like it's going to be out for all that long as cloudy skies are going to take the place of uh, some of the fog that we started off the day with tomorrow morning. We will probably see that fog redevelop and then headed into about Tuesday night into Wednesday. That's when we see our first wave of wet weather. So Tuesday night into Wednesday is going to come as snow and rain for most of the region. Coming up, we'll take a look at Future Tracker and see exactly where the snow is headed and where the rain is headed and which one you should expect. It's coming up in just a bit, Laura. All right, my friend. Well, skiers and snowboarders, they want that snow, so hurry up, okay? Uh, we may have a shorter season this year. The National Weather Service is reporting mountains have half the snow that they generally do at this time. Many ski resorts in North Idaho and Washington have had to delay opening runs due to the lack of that snow. The Weather Service says this is no different though from last year. And coming in new at noon, state wildlife officials are looking for new ways to manage the wolf population in Northeast Washington. The decision is a response to Governor Jay Inslee's complaint that the killing of wolves in the Kettle River Range is what he calls unacceptable. Fish and Wildlife says it is discussing and researching other non-lethal options. The department has defended killing wolf packs as a last resort in order to protect cattle. The department is set to meet with an advisory group to develop a plan coming up by May 1st. Well, today is the day the federal government had planned to execute a man convicted of the 1996 Spokane City Hall bombing. But now the inmate is not scheduled to be put to death. Daniel Lewis Lee was going to be the first person to be federally executed since 2003. However, the Supreme Court temporarily blocked the Trump administration from restarting federal executions. So for now, Lee and three other inmates set to die between now and January 
are safe from execution. And some of you may remember Lee set off a bomb outside Spokane City Hall back in 1996. No one in that incident was hurt, but he is convicted of killing an Arkansas family as part of a plot to set up a whites only nation. And he was also involved in a shootout with Ohio police. Experts say the federal executions will be put on hold for at least a few months. This is while the attorney general looks over the case. This is just coming in new at noon. Today, Amazon is filing a lawsuit after losing its bid for a military contract. The campaign says improper pr pressure is how they put it from President Trump harmed its chance of winning the $10 billion Pentagon contract. The Pentagon awarded the cloud computing contract to Microsoft back in October. Amazon said the decision should be revisited due to substantial errors and Trump's interference. The project is aimed at storing and processing large amounts of classified data. Well, here at home, your neighborhood school may be changing in the next few years. We talked to the Spokane Public School District, who says the changes will help the growing number of students that are here now. This road here, Mount Vernon, is one of the Spokane Public Schools boundary zones right now. So students on this side of the road go to Adams Elementary, and then students on this side of the road actually go to Hamblin Elementary. But because of the new middle schools that are being built over the next few years, these current boundary lines could be completely changed. Spokane Public Schools is building three new middle schools, two on the north side, here and here, and then one here on the south side. The district has set up a committee that will be in charge of figuring out the best way to move school boundary lines around with these new schools. We're going to look at grandfathering so we don't separate siblings if at all possible. Uh, we're going to look at neighborhood makeups. We're going to look at school makeups, so diversity, socioeconomic factors. They've already chosen who will be on that committee and they will start meeting next month. By the end of next year, their plan is to have a rough draft of the changes. And then we can start the next level of community engagement, which would be let's talk about those those draft boundaries and get some feedback from the community. So that by summer of 2021, the new boundaries will be finalized. But the changes won't start right away. It will happen gradually over the next few years as each middle school opens. This won't just affect middle school boundaries, though. All grades could see different boundary lines after the middle schools open. Here's why. As those middle schools come online, that changes the feeder patterns from our elementary schools and then also correspondingly changes our feeder patterns to our high schools. So it's a matter of keeping each school in the district balanced. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crum 2 News. Certainly continue to track all those boundary uh, discussions and changes right here on Creme 2. Gonzaga Bulldog fans buzzing with excitement. The team is rising in the polls as they await a few major tests.